If the holder of a bond intends to hold onto the bond until it reaches its maturity date, the bond is considered a held to maturity security. Held to maturity securities are less liquid and therefore considered long-term assets unless they're going to mature within one year of the balance sheet date. Suppose that a company buys a 10-year, 10% interest rate, 100,000 long-term bond at par, which means that the price of the bond was equal to its face value. Suppose the bond was purchased on January 1st, 2018, and it pays interest semi-annually. When the bond is first acquired, there is a simple decrease in cash in exchange for an increase to long-term investments. After the purchase is recorded, the investment in the bonds will accrue interest. Every six months, the company will accrue 5% of interest, which is 10% divided by two. Suppose that at the end of the year, the company receives a single payment for interest accrued during the year, totaling $10,000. At that point, interest receivable decreases in favor of an increase to cash. At maturity, the company will receive its principal of $100,000 back. At that point in time, it will record the receipt of cash and remove the bond investment from the balance sheet. But what if the bond is sold before it reaches maturity? Suppose that a 10-year, 10% interest rate, $100,000 long-term bond was purchased at par on January 1st, 2018. The bond pays interest annually on December 31st. If this bond is sold on March 31st, 2018, it is sold prior to its maturity date. Consider what the bond might be worth on March 31st, 2018. It has a face value of $100,000 and has accrued three months of interest, which has not yet been paid to the owner. The accrued interest is the equivalent of one-fourth of 10%, or 2.5%. Therefore, it makes sense that a buyer would be willing to pay $102,500 for the bond. The entries would be one, remove the bond from the balance sheet, Two, record receipt of $102,500 in cash. And three, treat the access credit as interest revenue. Keep in mind that a bond may be sold below or above its face value. Whether a bond sells below or above face value depends on whether the bond pays a stated rate of interest below or above the market rate of interest. Most corporate bonds are meant to be sold at par. In other words, the stated rate of interest is at par with the market rate of interest. However, the market rate of interest could change right before the bond becomes available for purchase. Suppose that Corporation B issues a $50,000 bond offering composed of 50 bonds of $1,000 each. The bonds will pay a 9% interest rate payable semi-annually. However, just before the bonds hit the market, the current market rate of interest drops to 8%, thus causing these bonds to yield above market. Therefore, when the bonds begin to sell, investors are willing to pay a premium for these bonds. Assume that these bonds eventually sell at 105, which means 105% their face value. Therefore, Corporation B will collect a total of $52,500 from selling the 50 bonds at $1,050 each. Corporation B has obtained extra cash of $2,500 from the sales premium. The opposite can happen if the stated rate of interest on the bonds is lower than the market rate. Suppose that Corporation B issues a $10,000 bond offering that is comprised of bonds paying 10% interest, which is paid out twice per year. The bonds pay 5% interest for each semi-annual payment on January 1st and July 1st each year. However, just before the bonds are offered on the market, the current market rate of interest increases to 11%. Therefore, when the bonds become publicly available, investors are not willing to pay full face value for the bonds. Suppose that the bonds eventually sell at 96.5, which means that investors pay only $965 per bond instead of $1,000 per bond the company has effectively raised a total of $9,650 instead of $10,000. The difference of $350 is the discount on the bonds.